this is Professor Cummings and this is a follow-up video to my video for epicyclical gears or planetary gears and I went through in that last video kind of the function of them the concept of how they worked and in this video I want to go through calculating the you know help you calculate the inputs and outputs of these gears and I want to use a method called the tabular method well, the tabular method is a pretty easy method of doing this it's actually very intuitive once you see it run through a few times and in this video I'm going to just go through the the concept of how to put that table together and then in another video the next the next follow-up video I'll actually give you an example I don't want this video to be too long uh, as I go through this concept and I you really want to just lay it out and explain why you're doing what you're doing now in order to understand this you got to understand some of the basic ideas behind gearing in general then these are some of the universal ways gears work so what I'm gonna go through in this video is first go through the idea of gear ratios so I did this in another video so I've got two videos on gearing but my video on basic gearing I went through gear ratios and how to come up with them so I want to review that a little bit because that's gonna be key uh, I want to go through the sign convention in planetary gears in order to understand you know which direction the input and output are going and there's all sorts of little things you can do to end up changing that you can uh, you, it's important to know what the sign of the gear is going so how which direction the gear is turning is going to be important to know you know how these gears are actually interacting I want to talk about the implication of the arm or the carrier now I use those terms interchangeably you know in some application you'll see it called the arm in some application you'll see it called the carrier and I'm just gonna I think I say the arm probably the most in this video so we'll just say the arm of the of the system and as you know uh, planetary gears are made up of a sun gear let's see here the, the sun gear the planet gears that are rotating about the sun and an angulus and the planetary gears are actually connected through something called the carrier or the arm and then once we've looked at you know all the different players in the planetary gear and how they work to the in their calculations I'll show you the total motion of the gear train so the input to the output and how that's done and why you know the table is important to keep your thoughts and everything organized so let's go through this and we'll start with a little bit of review so the velocity ratios so the velocity ratios can be calculated based on just any two meshing gears now in this little gif here you have a gear with uh, 60 teeth that's the driver a gear with 30 teeth that's being driven and as you can see in the gif you know the one gear they're actually going at pretty different speeds 30 teeth to 60 teeth you can see the smaller gear is actually rotating much faster you know that angular velocity is much higher with the smaller gear with the lesser teeth so this is how the the gear ratio actually works out so you got this these gears they're clearly going at two different rotational speeds but they have a common speed and that's known as the tangential speed where they actually mate you know so their speed between both the gears are actually one common speed whatever that might be between these two and it is that common speed or known as a tangential speed is just the radius of gear a times the angular velocity of gear a which is also equal to the radius of gear b times the angular velocity of gear b these two are equal and they come to the same common tangential velocity all right you know the bigger the uh, radius of a the smaller the angular velocity and the smaller the, the radius and the higher angular velocity so there is a proportional relationship between both the diameters of the gear or radius of the gear and the angular velocity of the gear there's also a proportional relationship between the number of teeth that are engaging in gears that's also part of the velocity ratio so you can see there's a relationship in the angular velocities, the radiuses or diameters, and the number of teeth. And in this particular instance, the velocity ratio of 60 teeth to 30 teeth would be 2. So that's the idea of the velocity ratios. Now keep in mind this is a, a concept that goes between gears and how they mesh, and it's going to play up, you know, very big in, in uh, planetary gears. Also, again, another important point, notice that in this particular setup, that the direction of gear A, when you're dealing with external gears, is the opposite of gear B. So that you, 
when you merge gears together you're going to get an opposite rotation out of the reacting gear you know two important points that I want to bring up now when you've got planetary gears you're dealing with again a Sun a planet that rotates about the Sun and an arm gear or and an arm or a carrier now in one condition the first condition of breaking down you know planetary gears and trying to understand how they behave we will look at the arm or look at a condition where we take the arm and actually keep the arm fixed so you got planetary gears and you're not allowing the arm to move you know in this condition it looks no different than any other standard gear train you know you've got one gear rotating and forcing the other to move you know and you've also got you know the condition of the velocity ratio at play the only thing this arm is doing is it's just something that's holding the gears together so the arm is fixed there's no motion on the arm you know and again you can treat this as just a standard gear train but there's something important to keep in mind when you think of that standard gear train and this is why velocity ratios are so important you know one revolution if you just take one revolution of gear a you know with based on that velocity ratio, we're going to get a proportionate revolution number of revolutions in gear B all right so that means if I take gear a and rotate it one time that I'm going to get two in this two to one velocity ratio two rotations out of gear B another way of looking at this is let's say we don't know how many rotations or how fast it's going you know because velocity takes into the same place we know that if we rotate this by X the velocity of X on gear a that the velocity at gear B is going to be X times whatever that velocity ratio and in this case it's going to be in a over in B and it's also going to be in the opposite direction and in this case we'll say that gear a is turning in a positive gear B is going to be whatever opposite that is you know so if gear a is going in a negative direction and we'll go into sign convention quickly or soon here we'll see that gear B is whatever uh, gear a is with the minus sign to it to represent it's going in the opposite direction so that's that's the condition we'll say conditions one and two condition one being if you rotated you know in direction one made one revolution condition two is if you uh, give it a certain speed on gear a you're going to in both cases see it the difference or the reaction in gear b is going to be the proportional based on the velocity ratio again keep that those in, in mind so it so in uh, gear A, you got the, the arm is fixed. You know, the rotation of the two gears are in opposite direction. And you've got, you know, in this case, gear A going clockwise. And we're just going to arbitrarily say that that clockwise is negative. That's the general convention or standard convention for uh, epicyclical gears or planetary gears but we're just gonna say you know just go with this one and say that it's you know the gear A is rotating in the in the negative direction because it's going clockwise that means gear B is going in the positive direction because it's going counterclockwise or as some people say anti-clockwise so this is our sign convention for gearing and that's gonna be very important to keep in mind because when especially with epicyclical gearing there are several conditions where you can change the gears direction and that's going to be very important as to what you're getting as its output again when gear a makes x rotations you know in the, in the clockwise direction you can expect gear b to make a proportional based on x and this velocity ratio in the positive direction counterclockwise now let's look at a condition or imagine a condition where an entire rotation is based around what the arm or the carrier is doing now what I mean by that is assume this entire system is locked up and we're just turning the arm in a particular rotation let's just say in a positive direction we'll say positive we're doing a positive number of RPMs is Y you know so it's going rotating in the in the positive direction counterclockwise Y so the rotation of the arm what that does is the arm actually compounds the rotation of the gears you know, so rotation of the arm going in the a positive y direction. So if we were to turn this again counterclockwise at a particular speed, and again I'm just using y as just the, the variable representing the RPM, you know, it adds to the real rotation speed of the planet and the sum gear. 
basically there is a relative speed between what the arm or the carrier is doing and both the sun gear and the planet gear and remember the sun and the planet gear are rotating in opposite directions of one another you know, again keeping this same convention let's just say that this arm is rotating in a positive direction you know all items are rotated relative to that arm so keeping that in mind again keeping the rotation is relative to the arm and the last condition is the real speed or the total motion of the entire system so in this case again we've got the arm rotating in the positive direction and as you can see the Sun is rotating in the positive direction and the uh, the planet gear is actually rotating you know based on the Sun and, and just ignore the, the annulus gear for now so the rotation of the arm like I said compounds the rotation of the gears and a rotation of an arm in a plus y rpm adds to the real rotation speed of the planet and gear so what does this mean mathematically how are we going to add this in so rotation of gear a like we had said if we just are spinning that in the counterclockwise direction at x rpm what does that do to gear b it rotates it in its opposite direction of x you know a negative x by the rate by the velocity ratio you know, so whatever proportion of that speed is going to be attributed through the velocity ratio and if we're rotating the arm which is going to compound the speeds or make a, a relative difference in the speeds there's going to be a total speed of the arm which is going in the y you know negative or excuse me the positive direction counterclockwise the green is going in the uh, counterclockwise so a positive y rpm is going to compound on the the two gears so the total speed at gear A will be the speed of the arm plus whatever is going on with gear A, which is X RPM. So you're adding the RPMs together. Whereas with gear B, the planet gear, you're actually subtracting from what the arm is doing. So again, it's, it's a relative speed to the arm. Everything is relative to the arm. So now let's look at this if using the tabular method. Let's go ahead and create the table for this particular system. So again, we still got our planetary gears, you know, basically the same thing, just a slightly smaller version of it. You know, and we're calling gear A the sun, gear B is the planet, you know, and gear A is obviously going in the positive direction, the counterclockwise direction, and gear B is going in, in mating up in its opposite, and the arm or the carrier is going in the counterclockwise direction as well. So again, we got the counterclockwise rotation is positive, the clockwise rotation is negative, or anti-clock rotation is negative, or excuse me, anti-clock is positive, clockwise is rotation is negative. So let's create the table. So again, we got the step, we got the conditions, we know what the arm is doing, we know what gear A is laid out, and we got gear B laid out. So let's look at our, our conditions. So in first one that we went over was the arm was fixed, gear A makes a plus one revolution uh, and rotating in counterclockwise direction. So the arm is doing nothing, gear A is rotating one time, and we know that gear B is going to be moved based around the gear ratio in the opposite direction all right this next one the arm uh, is fixed and gear B makes a positive X rotation that should be gear a that's actually a typo so gear a is going at plus X and the rpms of gear B is going to be a negative X opposite direction going uh, by based on the gear ratio in a over in B now when we look at all the elements rotating based around the arm going to the counterclockwise direction we're just going to add or compound what the arm does so it's all everything is getting a positive counterclockwise rotation based on how fast that arm is rotating which gives us the total motion you know the arms total motion is still the same it's just going in the positive y direction counterclockwise direction gear B is compounding it by adding to the arm and gear or gear A is adding to the arm you know so it's X plus Y and gear B is just subtracting 
from the arm. So it's the ratio of x, you know, the rotation and part of rotation from A based on the velocity ratio of B. So this is the layout of the tabular method. Okay, this is the layout of the tabular method and you know, I'll go through and give you an actual example with actual numbers and, you know, a full-blown scenario in my next video. So this is Professor Cummings, and I want to thank you for watching, and go ahead and thumbs up, like, you know, subscribe, or visit the engineer's reference where this video will also pop up, as well as a few others on mechanical engineering topics. But thanks for watching.